I'm gonna quit poker if I can't turn what's left of my bankroll into $10,000. Let's go around for the journey. Welcome back everyone to another episode of the $10,000 challenge. In this very first hand of note, we looked down at five sick to hearts very early into our session. We decide to raise from under the gun and then the opponent to my left, who is literally what this entire episode ends up being about, Miss Amy decides to three bet to $60. The action folded back to me. I'm out of position, but I have a hand I do enjoy. Suited connectors, like I always tell you, can't get them away from me. I make the call. Pop comes out queen jack three. There are two red cards. Unfortunately, they don't match the ones I have. When I check it over to her, she decides to bet for 50. And unfortunately, with position and aggression, there's no way that I will be able to put up a fight against her. You win this time. It seems like I haven't learned much from my first go around battling with Amy, so let's add fuel to the fire. I look down at Queen 10 of clubs here from the button. Beautiful hand to see, especially on the button. After it folds to me, I make it 20 to go. Amy from the small line calls and the flop comes out ace high. I do have a couple backdoor draws, so when she checks it over to me, I decide to throw out a pretty chunky seabed of 45. She makes a call and the turn card comes out the king of spades. Once again, uh, one of the cards that does give me equity, we now improve to a gutter ball to go along with queen high. But more than that, this is just a card that's going to favor me more than it should her, at least I think in theory. So when she checks it over to me again, I decide to continue along with the story. I've got a big hand, ace king, pocket aces, pocket kings, pocket fives even. I go for a massive bet here of 110. Once again, she decides to think about it for a second before calling. And we're going off to a river card that comes a six of hearts. That front door flush now comes in. And when she checks it over to me, I have a couple of decisions to make. To be quite honest, I don't think she's going to get to this river with many flushes. The reason being is after I go pot pot, it's just unlikely for her to hold on with many flushes. I'm assuming she's a thinking player, or at least she has shown the ability to be a fairly strong adversary, pretty good opponent. So I'd assume she'd be pitching those cards in the muck. Hard to tell, maybe a hand like King 10 of hearts or something like that can continue with a pair and a flush draw, the nut flush draw, but all that to be said, I decide to just go for it. I realized that going really big here wouldn't make too much sense, so I decide to bet 180. Looking to get any non-believing ace to fold as well as some random middling pairs that she may have. After a bit of thinking, she decides to make the call though. We show our queen high as proud as can be, and she shows king deuce of diamonds. Absolutely no regard for me or my raises. Good on her. It's like she's maybe watched a video or two. Who knows? I was killed so badly by Amy, and I'm still sitting in this car after the session trying to figure out what the hell just happened. I just got molly -whopped. I was going to like do this whole spiel where I challenged Amy to heads up on Club GG, but then I was like, I'm going to embarrass myself and get destroyed. We're scared of Amy. We're, we're layouts. But if you guys are interested in Club GG, you guys can click the link at the top of the description. It's pretty simple. I play on there. If you think you're as good as Amy and can play me, we'll set up some heads up games. Get in the mix, get in the felt. They got all the stakes you can want to play. 50 cent, $1, $1, $2, even $5, $10, and stakes much lower than that. It can all be done by clicking the link at the top of the description. I'll see you guys over at Club GG. And Amy, I'll be waiting for you. I won't be. I'm, I'm not. If I see anyone by the name Amy, I'm just gonna leave the game. Honestly. There's one thing that you can bet your last dollar on is that my mom didn't raise a quitter. So although I failed a couple of times to this point, I promise you, I'm gonna keep trying. Believe me or don't. In this following hand, I look down at a hand synonymous with the casino I'm currently playing at. I make it twenty dollars to go for reasons beyond me, but. Here we are. Amy from the small blind calls once again, and the big blind decides to join this party. We go off to a flop that comes ace five five. At this point, I wish, you know, I had Jackson five, but here I am with the Robbie. Action checks to me, and I throw out a C bet for 30. Amy calls, and the big blind gets out of the way. We're going heads up to a turn card, ready to tango, that comes an eight. Doesn't change too much, so when she checks it over to me, if she still has a middling hand, sevens, sixes, nines, all those kind of holdings. I think a double barrel will get the job done, so I make it $60 to go. I'm just playing with people, or at least these young kids like to call range at this point, but it seems like a massive fuck you to my face when my opponent just calls. Range or no range, the river card comes out of five and it doesn't matter what the hell I'm pretending to do, the jig is absolutely up. When she checks it over to me now, there's literally nothing I can possibly do. 
I decide to shut it down and check it back. Amy shows Ace-9 offsuit, which is obviously going to be better than Jack High. Not only did I just get walked all over by a poker player, whether it's a girl or a boy, doesn't matter, but this poker player fucking shit on me. Absolutely owned my soul. Damn. This may be the first time a woman's ever broken my heart that wasn't my partner. I'm pretty much an emotional wreck. I guess a poker one at that. I'm looking for something to be happy about. At this point, we've been losing every hand. In this following hand, I make it $20 to go. There are two callers. When the action gets to the small blind, there's like 60 some odd dollars in there for free for the taking, and he is licking his chops. He three bets to $105, pretty much slapping me in the face and putting the cherry on top. But when the action folds back to me with the suited ace and the simple fact that I'm stuck a couple hundred dollars by this point, I'm not going anywhere. I can promise you that. I make the call and luckily for me, everyone else gets out of the way. I am heads up and by the grace of God, I at least have position, even though that's not helped me to this point. And the flop comes absolutely dismal. King, queen, three with two diamonds. There is a spade out there. After a bit of thinking, my opponent does something I definitely wasn't expecting. He checks it over to me. I think at this point, if I bet, it would almost look a little fishy. As dumb as this sounds, I feel like checking the flop and floating the turn if he decides to bet and or if he checks me betting the turn might be a little more of a credible story. I can represent a not only a king, but a hand like maybe king jack suited or queen jack suited, ace queen suited. All these hands make sense. So I check it looking to continue my devious plans and the turn card's a pretty good one. It comes to six of clubs. My opponent checks it over to me. It's almost clear as day that my opponent has a hand exactly like pocket jacks or pocket tens. He's completely capped his range. This fish is gonna bet. And this fish decides to bet 50. By this fish, that's my hand. Yeah, I'm the fish. The action gets back to my opponent who thinks about it for some time and folds. Holy shit, we finally run a reasonable pot. Nearly most of the money we lost there, we ended up picking up in one pot with no pair. I can't make a hand and I, at least we want a pot. Let's go. It looks like the heater is definitely on the way. After being fairly cool the first hour of the session, I've picked up pocket kings, pocket queens, and now pocket tens. The unfortunate thing is we just three bet and took it with those other pairs. This time I'm the first raiser. I make it 20. I end up getting two callers here and the flop comes out eight, seven, three. But the action checked over to me, easy spot for me to throw out a little feeler bet. I make it $50 to go. Scary to throw out C bets, even with over pairs on boards like this, especially against players that can be calling with every single pair there. I don't think I'm ever getting three bet here, so oof. either way, luckily for us, we do get one player to come along, which is the big blind, and the turn card now comes out a four. Once again, none of the really major draws that I was really worried about get there outside of five, six, checking it back and playing some pot control, which I do. And like I said, I think I like that better. Laying my opponent bluff on any river is probably good. I'm probably going to call most of them. And when the river card comes out, the six is not one that I really love. My opponent bets out for 60. And without much thought, I decide to flick in the call. Here's where I want to pump the brakes. Easy spot for us to fold. Even if my opponent doesn't have a five, which honestly, I don't suspect him to have. I just clearly see him having something better than one pair. He's never betting this river with anything less than two pair. And I think I know better than this. At this point, uh, I'm frustrated. He shows 8-6 and against my better judgment and my lack of taking the time to think it through, we end up just dusting $60 in a spot we just didn't need to. That's pretty frustrating. All right, all the fun stuff aside, I wanna make this very clear. The beautiful thing about poker is that no matter what the hell you look like, what the hell you are, whatever in the world you wanna be, as long as you got the cash, you're welcome to the table. And no matter what your strategy is, you have a chance to leave a winner. That's the beautiful thing about the game. So try not to be an asshole at the table. Be friendly to new faces. And yeah, just don't be a shit. You can expect new videos every Wednesday and Friday. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. We're on a race of $10,000. My neck is hurting and we lost today. So I'll leave you guys with that. Updated bankroll totals here. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. He said, real blood, I never seen a crypt and I believe it. It's too easy. Too easy. I can do this with my eyes closed.